Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to discuss this article that came up recently in my chat, which is thinking about taking your computer to the repair shop, be very afraid. Not surprisingly, female customers bear the brunt of privacy violations. I'm not gonna discuss the article so much as I'm going to discuss the study, the primary source document that the article is based on from my perspective as somebody who's had a repair business for almost 15 years now. The TLDR of this study is that they took computers that had certain issues. One of them, I believe, had an issue with the battery and the other computer had an issue where they just disabled an audio driver to these different types of repair shops and recorded what they did. They had something installed in the computer so that the repair shop would not know it was running in the background, but that was monitoring everything that they did so they could see if the technician was trying to you know, sneak files off or look at stuff they weren't supposed to look at. They went to national chains, regional chains, and local small businesses. And as a result, you can see over here, it looks like the local chains looked at female data a lot, male data very little. Looks like the regional chain looked at male data a lot, female data a little bit less. The national chain had no interest in men and a little bit of interest in female data. And again, when we're talking about something like replacing a battery or we're talking about something like they just disabled the audio driver, there's absolutely no need to be looking through any of this information for that. That there's just there's no argument for it whatsoever, in my opinion, that is completely and utterly unacceptable. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to read through this a little bit and give you some of my thoughts and ideas on it and also what aggravated me as I read through this particular study. The first thing that bothered me is where they're talking about privacy policies and controls. I think that this is misleading anybody who reads this into a false sense of security. Their response has conveyed no indication of a protocol or control to protect access to customers' data. Their responses were codified in the inter-rater agreement between the two researchers was moderate. Uh, it says the responses were similar to the technicians only do the repair and nothing else. It will be sent to a technician elsewhere, one said, and it is an honor system. We wouldn't be in business if we were, do if we were doing that. The first response, it will be sent to a technician elsewhere... Uh, not Okay, not a great response. That was from the regional chain. The local had said, it is an honor system. We wouldn't be in business if we weren't doing that. They said that that is a deflection and unsatisfactory. And I call BS on that. That is not a deflection. How the F is that a deflection? This is the exact same thing that I say, and I never look through customer data. Here's something that's very important to understand. It doesn't matter if I have a privacy policy written down or not. You cannot see what is done behind closed doors. This is a trust system, and if you don't trust us, you should avoid giving us the password to your disk, encrypt your disk, or not give it to us at all. It's that simple. The way that I see privacy and protecting customer data, it's kind of like the way that gun safety courses will tell you, do not point a gun at anything that you do not intend to kill or destroy. Never point a gun at something you don't intend to kill or destroy. Conversely, never give your data unencrypted or give your encrypted data with the password to unencrypt it to anybody if you want that data to remain private. It's that simple. I do not have a copied and pasted nonsensical privacy policy that nobody's going to read. What I have is very simple. If somebody comes in and they're concerned about the I don't have some copied and pasted privacy policy that nobody's going to read that doesn't actually have any effect in the real world. Here's what I do. If somebody comes in that has any concerns about privacy whatsoever, what I do is I open their machine and I would take out their solid state drive or their hard drive. Hi, Oreo. And what I do after taking out their SSD is I'll take one of my machines from the window. I'll turn it on and I'll say, see how it has a question mark? There's no data on it. I'll turn it off. I'll put their drive in, turn it on. And I go, see how this is booting up to your login screen? And they'll go, yes. Then I'll take the drive out and I will establish it just in case, because some of the people that come in are not very technically savvy. This is where all of your data is stored. I will then put that into an anti-static bag. I will put it into a bubble mail or envelope and I'll hand it to them and I'll say, you now have all of your data. I have no access to this. It is not physically in my possession. That is the only way that you are going to ensure this. What drives me nuts is this idea that there are that, like there's some sort of privacy policy that could be written down or some or or controls that are going to somehow magically prevent somebody that has access to your hard drive, your device physically and a password to decrypt it to having access to all of your data. I don't like that because it gives people a false sense of security. That is the right answer. It is an honor system. And if you do not trust that person with your data, since it is an honor system, you should not give them your data. I want my customers to be properly educated and properly understand everything. I don't want them to think that because I read, oh, my employee read some Usenix ethics guide, that that means that their data is safe. Your data is safe if you encrypt it 
or if it is in your possession. And this is why it drives me nuts that we have now left the golden era of computing where drives were not soldered onto the board. Uh, so what I said is if you are paying for data recovery, then there is no way around trusting that we are not looking at your stuff because we have access to your data as we are recovering it. A privacy policy is literally something I'm copying and pasting from a template website in legalese that has nothing to do with whether or not the employee is a creep, a sicko, or a pervert. If you have private data, it doesn't matter what the privacy policy is. If somebody is a sick creep, they're going to look regardless of a privacy policy because they think they are not going to get caught. And here's the thing, here's the thing that's very important to understand. When it comes to a privacy policy, if you find out that we disobeyed our privacy policy, all that means is that you can sue us later. So think about this. If you crash into my car, the way the law is written, for the most part, I can sue you if you do not want to pay to reimburse me for the damage you've done to me, and then I can get back the money. So if you do $10,000 of damage to my car, I can sue you for the $10,000 of damage, the $5,000 in legal fees, and then in a court of law, I can get that $15,000 from you, and then I can make myself whole again for the court costs and the damage that you did to my car. This is not true with privacy. If I steal your data and then I leak that data to other people, you can sue me and get money, but you will never get your privacy back. That data is going to be out there. It's like pouring food coloring into a bowl of water. You're never going to be able to get that food coloring out of the water the same way that if I leak your personal data, you'll never have that personal data back. It's out there in the world. You can't just do what Will Smith did in Men in Black and just hit this little red thing and then make everybody have selective amnesia. That doesn't exist. A privacy policy simply means that I am telling you that I am. this is what I am doing. But again, you are trusting me to that. The same way that I could say, look, I'm not going to shoot you, but I'm pointing a gun at you. You should not point a loaded gun at people that you do not intend to kill. And in my opinion, and perhaps I'm being a little bit too paranoid here, you should not give your personal data unencrypted to anybody that you do not fully trust. It is a trust system, and I don't want my customers thinking that there's some little magical piece of paper that's going to change any of that. If you don't trust us, you need to leave the store with your data, and you need to only give us your data if it is encrypted. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about here. Let's say that I sign a contract with my personal trainer, Dr. Evil Genius. I'll link to his channel down below. He's a great personal trainer. Let's say I sign a contract with him, and it has a privacy policy. It talks about professional ethics, controls, and everything else. And let's say that in spite of signing that privacy policy, he tells everybody, I don't know, that when I did two deadlifts at 405 pounds, I did it listening to Enrique Iglesias ring my bells, right? That's, that's kind of embarrassing. That's kind of like, uh, you know, I don't want people to know that. So let's say I sue him. I can sue him, but it doesn't matter. Let's say I sue him. I take him for the, all of his $10 million, all of his cars, all of his apartments, all of his women. Like, I, I just run him into the ground. Does it change the fact that everybody knows that I listened to Ring My Bells by Enrique Iglesias at the gym? Not really. Like, th and this is the point that I'm trying to get across here. The only, It doesn't matter what any of that stuff says, because if somebody decides to break what's in that policy, you're screwed. This is why data cannot be a trust system, because unlike something like if he crashes into my car, I can sue him, I can get him to pay me for the damage he's done, you will never undo the damage done by a breach of privacy, which is why I think you should treat this the same way that you treat a loaded gun. Do not point it at anybody you do not intend to kill, and do not give unencrypted data or encrypted data with a password to anybody you would not be okay having access to and then leaking that particular data. No amount of suing him will ever make me whole again. I will never recover from that embarrassment. So I'd really appreciate it if you don't tell anybody. I'll just be out a little secret. I said in here, this is not unsatisfactory, it's just reality. Another quote from this study, similar to our findings for laptops, the researchers found no notice or communication on the privacy policy and how their data will be protected. And I said, what do you mean protected? If you give me the password to your device, there is nothing written in a contract that can protect you. I can remove your drive. I can, you know, DD rescue it to mine, log in and see all of your stuff. And 99% of the chance, you're not even going to know that I did that. If I take the drive out of your computer, I turn your computer off, I clone it, and then I put it back in. Even if you have all of this tracking stuff on the computer, you're probably never going to know that I did that unless you have some sort of NSA level spying device on there, which is unlikely for your average customer that needs assistance from us to fix their own computer. If you have any reason to believe that we might look through your stuff, you should leave with your drive or you should drop off a device that is encrypted without providing us a passcode and test the device when it is time for pickup before paying for the repair. This is the only secure way. 
I am not going to BS you with a copied and pasted policy that does nothing to protect you. I would be disingenuous and lying to you to say that this piece of paper does anything. If you do not trust us, if I'm a bad actor, this will do nothing because a bad actor will lie to you in their privacy policy. Some instances of this that I would suggest looking into are this one. An Apple Store ex-employee helped a customer by texting himself an intimate photo from her phone. Apple has a very well-written privacy policy. Or this one event where somebody sent an iPhone for repair to Apple and their sex tape wound up on Facebook. Uh, again... I'm sure Apple has a better legal team to craft a privacy policy than I do. At the end of the day, the privacy policy is bad here if it gives you a false sense of security. Another question that I have when looking over this entire thing, what were the ratings of these particular shops? Because there are lots of different stores that with many different ratings. And also, what are the areas they're in? So for instance, you could go to a highly rated place in New York City, like New York Computer Help, which has a ton of good reviews. Or you can go to a place like Portatronics, which is like two stars and mostly bad reviews. You know, again, you can go to places like Simple Mac, which uh, I... He actually got Nikolai Yezdov off of Google, which is why I'm even using Yelp to begin with. I, I don't. Does anybody else notice that Simple Mac iPhone repair to St. Mark's Place no longer has a Google Maps page? I don't. I don't know what the hell. But anyway, that, that's a topic for another video. So look, look again. You have five stars. You have two stars. Which one would I trust more with my data? Again, you know, we have 4.9 stars, 1,500 reviews on Google. I don't actually know because they never give the names of the stores. They never give the names of the local, the regional, or the national chains. I would like to know who these are. Now, I know that some of you are saying, well, that's that's unfair, that's mean, but I mean, it is a study. We are making some very, very broad generalizations about an entire industry. It would be nice if there was the basic accountability of knowing who they actually did this to. So, for, you know, when we do these on my channel, you know who they are, and you have a recording that demonstrates how the whole thing went. So when we did this video, Genius Bar Caught Ripping Off Customer on Camera by CBC News, there was audio recording, it was video recording, and you knew the Genius Bar that he went to. Further, for the positive ones, Geek Squad is the best Apple authorized service provider of all time. Uh, Geek Squad actually did the right thing. They didn't lie, and they didn't even charge us anything because the machine wound up working again without them having to do anything. You know which Best Buy we went to. You, I blurred out the employee's face, but you could hear the employee talking to us. You knew which Best Buy we went to, and you, again, you knew the, you could look up all the information on the store. For every single one of these places in this study, I don't know who these are. For all I know, this is a bunch of five-star national chains and one-star local repair shops, or vice versa. I don't actually know the names of any of these places, and it would be really nice to actually have that information. The reason being is your average customer is going to think to themselves, okay, well, how can I avoid having my data stolen? So it would be great if I knew what the names of these repair shops were, and we could figure out if there's any particular attributes about that local repair shop that make them more likely to steal your data. So for instance, if the local store is one star with 80 reviews, then I would say, okay, one of the ways you can avoid having your data stolen, in addition to, you know, encrypting it or just not giving it to them to begin with, would be do not choose one-star repair shops. But we don't have any of that data. It was never provided in this study, which is incredibly disappointing because my videos, which are not scientific at all, at the very least include the basic information, which is A, proof that the transaction actually occurred. And yes, I am going to go there, proof that the transaction actually occurred. And B, you know exactly who it is that we're talking about. That, that was kind of disappointing to me. To read some more quotes, existence and communication of privacy policies, we observed that while some private providers shared a privacy policy, it was a generic policy on data collection from customers during retail transactions. These policies did not address key questions for the device repair use case, such as how long user data, such as backups and credentials are stored, who has access to it, and what controls are in place to protect customer privacy. Now, how long is user data stored? That's a legitimate concern. Who has access to it? legitimate concern if it's people outside the repair shop. What controls are in place to protect computer cu customer privacy? This, in my opinion, unscientific, is wankery. What controls? What are you talking about when you say controls? If you give the password to someone who has your computer on their desk, they can look through your shit. It's that simple. There is no controls in place. If you give them the password, they can look through your stuff. That word gets used over and over again in the study, and they never give any indication as to what they'd like to see or what they mean by that word. Define a control. Explain to me what a control is. How are you going to protect and ensure that this person is not looking through your stuff? You could say, well, we have the manager look over their shoulder. But what if the manager's a pervert? You could say, well, we have the manager and two other people look over. You could say, that, oh, okay, we, we make them swear an oath of allegiance to not look through customer data. But at the end of the day, this goes back to what that person said, which they said was unsatisfactory that it is an honor system. And it is true. It is an honor system. And it, that is not the wrong answer here 
because that is going to allow the customer to make an informed decision, which is important, rather than give them a false sense of security. I would rather somebody leave my store understanding that it is a trust system and not give me money than give me money under the false assumption that something that's been written down in a privacy policy about control means that they are actually protected. I want them to have the full knowledge and understanding that if this is a concern to you, you should take your drive with you. That is the only way to ensure that you can 100% be certain that nobody's looking through your stuff unless, you know, somebody robs you on the way home or something like that. I don't want my customers to have a false sense of security. And I would prefer that if they don't trust us to be able to give them that full sense of security by actually handing them back their data before we do work on their device. Service providers' trustworthiness with customer data can be established through different sources, including legal rules, security controls, open policies and processes, and professional ethic. More wankery. Legal rules. Useless. They are doing this under the idea they won't get caught. And as I said already, it doesn't matter if they break the law and get arrested. Your data can't be unleaked. Again, this is like putting food coloring into a bowl of water. You're not getting it out. Security controls. Like what? Why does this study use the word control over and over and over without ever providing an example of one? Open policy and process. What does this mean? It sounds good on paper, it sounds professional and scientific, but what does it mean? I literally showcased the entire process of fixing a device on YouTube, and it has nothing to do with whether or not I decide to look at your files at the end when you're not there. True. I, I, I could tell you the exact entire process. I take okay, Open process. I put the computer on the desk. I take the screws, the screws out. I take the motherboard out. I replace ISL 6259 with a QFN BGA rework station. I put motherboard back in laptop. I test laptop, I give back to you. Great. Okay, so I could have a transparent and open procedure and process and tell you what it is. That doesn't mean I'm actually going to follow it. Again, if I am a bad actor, the way that you are going to protect yourself is encrypt your data, don't give me the password, or don't give me the drive. Professional ethic. Yes, good luck saying, I have professional ethics, trust me, bro, to satisfy this. And if that would have actually worked, like, were you serious? This is what they're doing when they say it's an honor system. We wouldn't be in business if we were doing that, which is essentially, trust me, bro. While useful, the existing code of ethics for individuals who handle such data, like the Usenix System Administrator's Code of Ethics, needs to be complemented. More research is needed for a framework that relies less on trust and more on procedures and controls to prevent privacy breaches when co employees handle customer data. Showing someone the Usenix code of ethics is not going to turn a creep into a normie. If you show this person over here the Usenix code of ethics, if you show this person here the Usenix code of ethics, I something tells me that, if, again, if, if, if you're the type of dude that's going to leak a customer sex tape onto Facebook while you're fixing their phone, you probably don't care about what's written down in the book of ethics. I'm going to take the wild guess that you know that that shit's wrong and you're doing it anyway. When they say, well, the Usenix code of ethics in and of itself is good, but not enough. You need to complement that with procedures and controls, procedures and controls, procedures and controls. Okay, so the person's replacing a battery. Okay, so you could have, when replacing a battery, what if you did this? You wrote down, when customer has bad battery, take old battery out, put new battery in, don't look through their shit. What's stopping the person from looking through their shit anyway? You could have a written procedure. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what that first technician said is still technically correct. It is an honor system. And if you... This is one point that I agree with. Service providers should communicate why a specific type of access is requested and the technical controls that customers can use to protect different types of data. This makes sense. So for me, I tell people, I wanna make sure everything works before you get here by testing it in your operating system. If this makes you uncomfortable, I can test it in my operating system. However, in exchange, you're not allowed to be mad if you come to pick up and something doesn't work perfectly within your operating system. And you can't pull the, well, I would have paid full price, but I want 50% off because Spotify is loading slow, which I, has happened to me before. I have had people that said Spotify is loading slow. I want a discount on my repair. When they had water damage on something, they did not want to give us the password. So I just, I said, here's your hard drive. I will test it in my operating system so that your data is with you. I'm going to be honest here. Like The reason that we ask for passwords is because we want to be able to test that everything works because when a customer comes in and something is not working the way it's supposed to within their operating system, they tend to get angry. They tend to get passive aggressive. They'll say, I took a 40 minute train ride here and it doesn't work. <sighs> And then they ask for a discount and then everything goes awry and it's just very, very bad. So we like to be able to test that everything works. However, we are more than happy to explain to you. We will test it in our operating system. We do not need access to any of your stuff. In exchange, 
you can't get mad at me if something doesn't work perfectly in your OS because I wasn't able to test it. Do we have a deal? And then we go ahead like that. I don't have to look through your data. I don't care to look through your data. I'm a simple guy. I'm a very simple guy. If I want porn, I'll go to Pornhub. I don't need to go through your shit. It's just, it's it genuinely, like, truthfully, honestly, I don't care. I don't care about your documents. I don't care about your pictures. I don't care about your finance, your browsing history, your data. I want your money. That's what I care about. I want your money. I don't care about the rest of any of this stuff. It's boring to me. It is useless. The time that I could spend looking through your personal shit is time that I could spend making more money by fixing somebody else's shit. And when you have $20,000 a week in payroll and $13,000 a month in rent, the money tends to be a little bit more important than looking through some random person you don't know's data. This is an important thing to understand because a bunch of you are probably going to go, why do you need a password to test a device? So I just hope that that clarifies it. Um, now, again, the places that look through people's stuff, are they one star? Are they five star? My main concern is whether a customer has the tools at their disposal to tell whether or not the shop is run by a creep. If this was all one stars, places that were the cheapest, then screw this study. If these places were all 300 to 500 five star review places, then it is possible that we are truly screwed. The results don't really aggravate me. It's just this false idea that controls means something that has driven me nuts throughout the entire thing. The other thing is I'd be very curious what area this was done in. So when we're talking about national, regional, and local chains, did they go to these places all over the country? Were these local shops all over the country? Or were they all in one area? Are we actually testing for the repair industry in this case? Or are we testing whether or not a specific zip code is a higher percentage of perverts and creeps? Real question, because again, it doesn't look like they went to more than 20 repair shops for this. I think they actually went to 10. Yeah, it looks like they went to 10 different repair shops about in this study. I mean, this is like a, this is a, this is a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States at this point. Now, some people may say, well, Lewis, you know, what you did over here is, well, technically you only went to one genius bar. How do you know they all do that? I have 10 to 30 customers a day for the last 15 years. I, I am very familiar with what Genius Bars all around the country tell their customers because I've, we, we get about 300 phone calls a day, we get about 10 to 30 devices a day, and we hear what the customers were told by the Genius Bar. We hear what they were told by the, again, to be clear, not scientific, anecdotal. I hear what the Genius Bars around the world in other countries tell customers, and it's virtually the same thing. Um, but I'm not even claiming this is scientific. If we're going to say this is a scientific study, the other thing here that I'm concerned about is not just the fact that we don't know what the ratings are. Again, are these two-star repair shops or five-star repair shops that we're talking about here, but also the fact that we don't know where these were actually located. Again, we may be, for all we know, we just may be proving that this particular town has a higher percentage of people that are, that are perverts than this other town, more so than the repair industry as a whole is an industry that screws over people or messes with their data. At the end of the day, the main point that I would like you to walk away from this video from is to not have a false sense of security based on a privacy policy. Don't. Or any of this not any of this wankery about like what are your professional ethics? What does the privacy policy say? What are your controls? If you don't want people to have access to your personal data, don't give them the fucking password to an unencrypted drive. It is that simple. This is my phone. It is encrypted. It has a passcode on it. If I get this device fixed, I am not giving anybody the password because I care about my privacy. Even if it was somebody that I actually trusted, I am not giving them the password because there is no, I would personally rather take the risk of picking up my device and something else not working and then having to go back and forth to the store two or three times or have to mail it back and forth two or three times, then take the risk of my personal data being given up. There is nothing you could write in a privacy policy. There is nothing you could write about your controls. There is nothing you could write about your professional ethics that would make me feel okay giving you the password to this. If I want my personal data to be safe, the one thing I want you to give away from this video with is don't give people unencrypted storage or the password to encrypted storage. That's it. That's a privacy policy right there. I am trying to come at this from a common sense perspective, not from a scientific perspective, because admittedly, I am not a data scientist. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think I get right, what you think I get wrong, and what you think of this approach. Do you think it's a little bit too paranoid to be telling people if you have any concerns about data privacy, here is your data, I am going to physically give it to you so that I don't have access to it? Or do you think that that makes sense as opposed to a privacy policy talking about using its code of ethics, controls, professional ethics, and all this other stuff? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.